All right, there's a lot of things to learn in knitting. There's a lot of skills, and I honestly believe that it takes a lifetime of knitting to learn it all, if you want to. It really depends how deep you want to go. However, I think there is one skill that every experienced master knitter knows how to do that every beginner intermediate knitter needs to learn. And that is how to read your work. What does that even mean? Is, is it a spy novel? Is it a romance? I mean, I personally think knitting is a romance, but you know, some people, sometimes, sometimes it feels like a thriller. If you're a yard chicken, knitting feels like a thriller. All reading your work means it is you can look at your knitting and know what's going on. It tells you when maybe you've made a mistake. If you've run into a problem, being able to read your knitting helps you troubleshoot what that problem is. It helps you keep track of your work far more reliably than writing hashtags or using a counter, in my humble opinion, because those things can all get lost. But if you can look at your knitting and read it, you can always find your way back to where you are in a pattern. I believe being able to read your knitting effectively makes you a better, more confident, skilled knitter. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and learn the basics of reading your knitting. today's video we're going to start with some pretty basic knitting knowledge and if you're like Carrie I already know all about that do I really have to sit through this don't worry down in the description box I always have timestamps to different parts of the video so that you can get to the information that you want to get to <laughs> more easily also down in the description box you will find a list of resources and videos that I think are helpful for uh, today's video some of these will have clearly marked affiliate links. If you choose to use one of my affiliate links to do some shopping, I earn commission, and this does help support my channel. Uh, it helps me buy materials for review, for demonstration, and just to keep this all going. So uh, if you'd like to use one of my affiliate links or just leave me a super thanks, some kind of tip through buy me a coffee, it is so greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. So I've got two swatches here to help us out. I've got this swatch, which is basically a stockinette swatch. And I have here a garter stitch. And these are the two basic, basic fabrics in knitting. On the surface, if you look at them, they have very different appearances. But if I were to pull out, if we were to isolate one row of stitches from each of these fabrics, okay? The row of stitches would look exactly the same. They would be this undulation of yarn. And there is an anatomy to the different parts of this wave of yarn. You have the right running thread, which looks like a little smile. You have the right leg, the pearl bump, which looks like a little rainbow. You have the left leg, and then you have the left running thread that also looks like a little smile. And being able to recognize where all of that is in your knitting does really help with counting, with troubleshooting, with knowing if everything is working in your knitting the way you want it to work. So let's take a look at what all of these parts look like in the actual fabric, which is 3D, because all those parts end up on different sides of the fabric. So we're going to start by looking at stockinette because stockinette you can just most clearly see the different sections of the stitch. On the public side of the fabric and stockinette we get our two legs. We have our right leg right here and our left leg and when those legs come together they make a V. All right you can see the V right here. So that V when you see a V V is for victory, and that is what we are looking for. It's very easy sometimes when you're looking at your fabric to kind of not see the Vs and instead look and see what looks like a little rooftop, an inverted V. If you see this little rooftop, this inverted V, all right, and your eye focuses on it, 
you need to know that those are actually representing two different stitches. It's the left leg of one stitch and the right leg of the other stitch. And that is actually comprising upside down stitches. That's a much larger topic. If you're interested, I have a whole video about it and I will link it up here and down in the description box below. But when it comes to counting stitches, what you want to concentrate on are your Vs, okay? because those Vs represent your right leg and your left leg, and that is one whole stitch. Now, when I'm knitting, I admit a lot of times my eyes just wanna focus on the upside down stitches. I don't know why that is. It's just what tends to happen. And when I'm counting stitches on stockinette, a lot of times what I'll do is either with my finger or another needle like this, I will put my needle right in the middle of the stitch between the left, the right and the left leg. And I focus on counting the columns of stitches instead of just an individual row of stitches. So seeing what legs go together is pretty straightforward. However, when we flip our work over and we look at the bumpy side of stockinette, it can get a little trickier because you've got all these bumps. How do you distinguish the pearl bumps from the running threads? And how do you know what pearl bump and what running threads are part of the same stitch? One of the things that's tricky with knitting with pearl bumps and running threads and seeing which ones go together in the same stitch is the fact that knitting, in order to have any stability, requires that those undulations of yarn are interlocked meaning the running threads of one stitch are going through the pearl bumps of the stitch down below. But let's take a closer look at our fabric and start seeing how we can recognize the different parts of the stitch and how we can figure out which pearl bumps go with which running threads. So again, pearl bumps, they look like the little arc of a rainbow. So that's what you wanna look for. You wanna look for the little arc of your rainbow and you know that that's a pearl bump. Now, where is the running thread that is part of this pearl bump? Well, it's like a little triangle, all right? So the pearl bump is the top of the triangle. If I draw a little line down an angle to the left, there is my left smiley face running thread. Go back up to my point of my pearl bump. I go back down the triangle to the right side and there is my little right side running thread smiling at me. Once you're really used to looking at where the pearl bumps are, it actually becomes easier to count your stitches sometimes looking at the pearl bumps, right? Because each stitch only has one pearl bump. So if I look and I'm like, oh, there's one pearl bump. There is the second pearl bump next to it. Third, fourth, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is what your stitches look like in stockinette, all right? But there is, of course, the most basic fabric of them all, which is garter stitch. Garter stitch, it has all of the same undulations of yarn as stockinette. The difference is in garter stitch, there are an equal number of pearl bumps on one side as the other. If you're used to looking at where your pearl bumps are in stockinette, you can find them in garter as well because it's the same little arc, all right? So counting stitches, you can just count your pearl bumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very simple. But where are my legs of my stitches? And where are my running threads? This is where it gets tricky in garter stitch. Because remember I said pearl bumps are on both sides of the fabric? Well, guess what? Your running threads also end up on both sides of the fabric in garter stitch. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I have stretched this out just to kind of get a visual on where all the parts of a stitch are in garter stitch. And like I said, sometimes it helps to stretch out the work so you can see it. So we've got our pearl bumps right here, which are our rainbows. All right. 
Now, we know the leg is right here. Okay, so here's the left leg right here. If I were to follow this left leg, I would go behind the work. So the running thread is actually to the back of the work right there. So in garter stitch, the running threads end up on the opposite side of the fabric from the purl bump, but they're still all part of the same stitch. So finding <laughs> the running threads of a stitch in garter is a little tricky because they're basically hiding and the legs get disguised because when the fabric is all scrunched up, all you're seeing is the purl bumps of one row and the running threads here of the row below. So why is that useful to know? Well, one, it's useful to know because if you decide to use duplicate stitch or something in um, garter, which I do have a video about, and you really want to follow the line of the stitches, you need to know where each part of the stitch is. Like using duplicate stitch in knitting is a way of taking a bit of scrap fabric and weaving it through the fabric following the thread path of each stitch. You need to know what that thread path is in order to do duplicate stitch effectively. And duplicate stitch can be a really good way to kind of disguise mistakes. It's also a nice way to weave in your ends. There's a lot of useful things with duplicate stitch, even with garter. But also it does help us spot mistakes and it helps us troubleshoot our work if we know where each part of the stitch is in a given fabric. Especially when we get into fabrics that mix pearls and knit stitches on one side of the fabric, like ribbon. In garter stitch, you get these ridges. These ridges are created with two rows of knitting. So every ridge that you see represents two rows. And that's how you can fairly easily count garter stitch, is just counting your ridges and multiply them by two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 ridges. I'd multiply that by two, that's 36 rows. But what if you get confused? What if you forget what the right side of the fabric is versus the wrong side of the fabric? Where have you, you know, where are your even rows and where are your odd rows if you're looking at your work? Have you done two complete rows of the garter stitch yet? Sometimes you kind of need to find the individual rows. The way I'm going to count rows and know that I'm counting all my rows is I'm actually going to start with a running thread. So here's a running thread down here. If I'm looking at the running thread of a fabric, that means there's a purl bump on this, attached to this running thread on the opposite side of the fabric. So that's one row, okay? My purl bump is row two. So I can alternate counting running thread one, purl bump two, running thread three, purl bump four, running thread five, purl bump six. And you can go back and forth counting the running thread and the purl bump in this diagonal fashion. So that's how you can do that. One of the things when I first learned how to knit that I wish had been better explained to me is how stitches are supposed to look when they're mounted on your needles. I would have avoided some unintended twisted stitches and also avoided some unnecessary concerns when getting live stitches back up on my needle because I had either dropped stitches or I had frogged back or whatever it was. We just avoided myself some stress had I simply known how to find the right leg versus the left leg of a stitch when it is up on your stitches like this before it's been worked into. To find your left leg or your right leg on the needle, you need to remember one thing, right leg first. So here are my stitches. There, you can really see it, right? So my right leg is leading my left leg. And in untwisted stitches, that should always be the case. The right leg reads, leads the left leg. We knit right to left. Our legs of our stitches are right, left, right, left. 
Notice something else about this. Here, you can see the right leg, which is leading the left leg, is sitting on the front of the needle, and the left leg is towards the back of the needle. And this is called the Western style mount. It's created when we wrap our yarn counterclockwise around the needle, which is how most of us learn how to knit. However, Sometimes the stitch gets turned so that the right leg is to the back of the work and the left leg is to the front. I have one stitch here that's sitting in this direction. Notice that the leg of the stitch that's to the front of the needle is behind the leg of the stitch that's to the back of the needle. And if we remember that the right leg comes first, that means that the right leg of the stitch is on the back of the needle. It's called an Eastern mount, because sometimes people actually do this on purpose. This is a much bigger conversation, by the way, Western mounted stitches versus, versus Eastern mounted stitches. If you really want to dive more deeply into how all of this works and how it affects your knitting and twisted stitches and various things, I have a whole video about it. Uh, I will link it up here and down in the description box below. It's a little much to get into today. Today, I really just want to focus on how you can find your right leg versus your left leg when you're looking at stitches on your needle. When you can most easily tell that your stitches are turned is actually while you're knitting. So I'm right now transferring my stitches back to my regular needle. As I'm transferring the stitches back, this stitch right here at the tip of my needle, I can very easily see that the leading leg is right here on the front of my needle. So that's my right leg, it's leading the left leg. And as I go across, I come to then this stitch. And very obviously, my leading leg is suddenly to the back of my needle. If I were to knit through this stitch as I normally would, I would accidentally twist it. Um, there's various ways that you can deal with the stitch when it's turned on your needle with the right leg in back. Uh, if you don't know anything about combo knitting, the easiest thing to do is to just take your right needle, kind of bring it behind the right leg, slip it, and then put it back on your left needle and get that stitch turned back around. And then it's just like any other stitch, and you can knit through it like any other stitch. Easy peasy. The, what I would do, personally though, is just go ahead and knit through the back leg, and that will also knit the stitch so that it's not turned. So those are sort of things that I look at when I am reading my knitting. And I think the big thing when I was first starting off that really did help me with reading my knitting was being able to accurately count uh, how many rows I had, how many stitches I had. Um, it made a big, big difference. When we don't count our things correctly, things tend to go wrong very quickly. <laughs> but it does also help me troubleshoot my work, recognize sooner when there is a mistake. If I know what my stitches are supposed to look like, what my stitches on my needle are supposed to look like, it really does help. I, however, would love to hear from you. What tips or tricks do you have for reading your work? How do you find it useful if this is a skill that you have already developed? I'd also love to know what questions you have. Um, about reading knitting that maybe I didn't cover today. I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. That is it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and got something useful out of it. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your other knitting friends. Liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos are all great ways to help support my channel. If you'd like to take your support a step Further, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you'd like to take it even another step further, you can always use one of my affiliate links down in the description or leave me a tip through a super thanks or buy me a coffee. Uh, any tips or commissions I earn always get reinvested back into the channel so I can hopefully keep making great content for you. If you do utilize any of these means of support, it is so greatly appreciated. Thank you so, so much. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy making. Bye. I never know the exact skill level of every single person who might watch this video. And yet I always hope there's something for everybody who comes watch this, watches. 
everybody who come watch. Everybody, I always, uh, I always hope. Yes, yeah, start. Okay. There's various things that you do with different parts of the stitches, and where different parts of the stitches end up on which side of the fabric determines what that fabric looks like. And I'm getting ahead of myself, and I need a little bit of Generally in knitting, we want our stitches to be nice and open. So when I spread these out, the legs open up. They're a little slutty, okay? I don't even know where it, that just popped into my head. I don't even know if I'm gonna use that.